Ready? All right, cool, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. Uh, well, actually, good afternoon. <laughs> Just about good afternoon. Uh, my name is Arun Gupta. I am uh, work for, at Amazon for over two years now. I am one of the principal open source technologists over there. And at Amazon, I work with a lot of service teams in helping them define their open source strategy. So last year, um, I work with the, our developer tools team very closely for the launch of Amazon Coretto. So my goal is to talk about what Amazon Coretto is, what was our motivation behind Coretto, and why we did this, you know, and uh, how do you get started with it is basically that forward. So um, brief story short, you know, Amazon Coretto is a downstream distribution of OpenJDK. OpenJDK has been the required reference, has been the reference implementation of Java platform since version 7. So that's sort of where all the work is done, and it's done by a lot of vendors um, around the world. But that's sort of the open source implementation of the Java platform. Um, now, Coretto today, I mean, if you think about sort of the major versions, you know, I'm not, and I'm not going to dig into the details of what the release cycles are, what the chains are, but the two major versions today which are long-term supported are Oracle JDK 8 and Oracle JDK 11. Those are, again, sort of the downstream distribution of Open JDK as well. So in that sense, if you look at Amazon Coretto, Amazon Coretto comes in two flavors as well. There is Coretto 8 that corresponds to OpenJDK 8, and there is Coretto 11 that comes to OpenJDK 11. And the fact that this is a downstream distribution, that means there is nothing that we maintain internally. Um, there is no forking, no, no like internal branches being maintained, but it is a pure downstream distribution like there are many other vendors uh, that are doing already. Uh, the biggest value proposition over here is uh, because of the release change cycle and all, uh, the public updates are no longer available for JDK 8, and JDK 11 was never on that cycle, and it was only on a six-month cycle. So what Amazon Coretto gives you is a no-cost long-term support. And when I say no-cost long-term support, I really mean Coretto 8 gives you no-cost long-term support until 2023, and Coretto 11 gives you no cost long term support until 2024. Um, and that is super critical, you know, particularly given you know, JDK 8 is end of life and JDK 11, again, there are no publicly available updates for that anymore. Um, the release cadence in terms of Coretto 8 is going to be we're going to do quarterly releases, at least quarterly releases. What that means is every quarter we're going to do a release, um, bug fixes, patches, anything that needs to be done, those will be released. Um, and I say, the reason I say at least is because in case there are CVEs, patches that needs to be done that customer come up with, we can do more frequent than that. Uh, so that's sort of the idea over here. But still, this is a no-cost uh, long-term supported release. And the way we look at this is um, anywhere you're using a hotspot-based JVM, so like let's say your Oracle JDK, it's a meant to be a drop-in replacement. 100% drop-in replacement. There are no issues about it. And I'll talk about our story on how we did that, how we almost got rid of Oracle JDK from all of Amazon, and I'll talk about that. So it's meant to be a drop-in replacement. So if you're using, like, say, IBM J9, then there it's not going to fit well because that's, J9 is a different uh, um, virtual machine behind the scenes. Uh, but if you're using, like, any other JDK that is using Hotspot as the virtual machine or the engine over there, it's meant to be a drop-in replacement for that. In terms of platform, uh, it has a wide range of platforms. You name it, all varieties of Linux, modern Linux operating system, Windows, Mac, Docker. And this is one of the first uh, platform, actually, that actually gives you a fully supported Docker image. So you can actually use this Docker image in production. That's sort of the key part that you want to understand over here. So that's sort of a quick overall introduction of what Amazon Coretto is. But you may be wondering, well, um, the other part, a uh, very important part, actually. Uh, every time we do a release, every quarterly release we do, is TCK certified. Because it's very important that we maintain the upstream compatibility here. You know, we don't want to you know, fork Java in any sense. You know, Oracle has an extended, extensive job in maintaining that upstream compatibility, and we want to keep you know, maintaining that compatibility. So every quarterly release, we, sun, we run full TCK certification, and that's um, of utmost importance to us. It was a very exciting moment. Uh, this is a picture from uh, last year, DevOps Belgium. That's sort of where we launched uh, what Amazon Coretto is. Uh, James Gosling now works for um, Amazon. So it was a very exciting time. 
the two people on the, if you look at the bottom picture over here, two people on the right are, one of them is an engineering manager, uh, the, one, the guy in the back, his name is Yishai, and the guy in the front is Paul, he's one of the in, um, principal engineers at Amazon who works in the JDK team. He has a lot of hotspot experience back from his Oracle days as well. So four of us were sort of, you know, at DevOps Belgium responsible for the launch. And of course, you know, James Gosling launching it was definitely a high point for us. So we had a really good time you know, kind of launching the career over there. He very well plays quite regularly with Coretto and you know, he plays a very strategic role with the team in kind of guiding what the future direction needs to be. So you may wonder why, why Coretto? You know, what is the need for it? Um, Amazon is a huge Java shop. You know? A lot of our services, you know, I mean, we, we are known to have a microservices-based architecture. So anything that you see out in the front, you know, pick, pick a service that you care about. S3, um, SQS, SNS, pick a service that you care about in Amazon. It's built as a set of lots of microservices behind the scene. And each of those microservices are picked up using a particular language. So we use a lot of Java in running those microservices. Okay? That's the fundamental part of it. Now, if you think about Amazon leadership principles, we have 14 leadership principles. Of those, customer obsession is the top one. And that truly drives what our roadmap is going to look like. Roughly 90 to 95% of our roadmap is driven by customer needs. So we listen to customer, what they want, we iterate upon it, and we deliver on that. And that's sort of what the driving factor for Amazon Coretto was as well. Now, as you realize, um, we were using Oracle JDK you know, a few years ago, and as we were using Oracle JDK, we realized that the features, you know, the patches were coming in you know, regularly, but each minor release was causing enough annoyances in our release cycle. And then, you know, because we, were, we had a support contract, so we would ask for a bug fix. Those bug fixes would take much longer for us to get a response back. Um, usually months, sometimes several months. And, but, you know, as the patches are coming in, we want to put them into production as well. Because we don't want to compromise security. Security is top zero, zero for us and for our customers as well. So there was a bit of a mismatch over there on how fast we can put the release into production and how fast a response time we were getting over there. So what we started doing is essentially, we started building OpenJDK from source. That, hey, you know, let's figure out what are the mismatch between uh, Oracle JDK or an uh, OpenJDK implementation. And it turned out Oracle did a fantastic job when they say, hey, by the way, the Java in OpenJDK and the Java in Oracle JDK is same. It's actually almost same. So that was sort of the biggest challenge that we had within Amazon to convince our team that is actually same. So what we wanted was an ability to quickly fix bugs. That, okay, we can't wait for months because at Amazon scale, any bug, you know, we don't know at what level where it's going to pop up and what damage it's going to cause. You know, we want to really keep the blast radius really small. That's sort of the way we operate all our services. So we started building you know, Open JDK from source. As we were building it, you know, as we were giving, you know, we build that Open JDK from source, we give it to a service, they try it on a particular microservice over there, and then they say, hey, by the way, I have this additional thing and this additional thing that I'm seeing it over there. But now, because we were not using binaries, but we were actually building from source, we had the ability to fix the bugs and iterate a lot rapidly. And then, one of the unique things in this sense is because we are running a lot of our services using that particular build, and we are also the producer and the consumer, so that has the ability by which we can look at, let's see how the JDK is actually being used inside Amazon. So I'll show you a snapshot of how we create flame graphs, which basically says, as you're making a call, it kind of goes down the stack trace and says, you know, which methods are taking more time and resources, et cetera. So we actually made some performance improvements for our specific use cases. Um, the important part, as I said earlier, is upstream compatibility. So there is no internal patches being maintained. Everything that we have ever contributed or released as part of Amazon Coretto has been released upstream, either contributed to upstream open JDK, but sometimes the process, you know, and that's the, that's the way, that's the nature of an open source project. Sometimes the 
contribution can take longer to be accepted in the open JDK community. So either we have opened an issue, attached you know, a patch to the issue, or the patch has been contributed and accepted to the open JDK. So the point being, 100% uh, done in an open stream uh, pay. So what really enabled Amazon Coreto, uh, Coreto adoption in uh, um, Amazon? One of the key features, as I said earlier, was a drop-in replacement for um, Oracle JDK. We were losing a lot of Oracle JDK. So that is really a fundamental requirement. That was a fundamental requirement for us. And really, of course, the commercial features that have not been released in open source yet, those were the only missing features, but we were using sort of the base JDK functionality, so that worked out for us. Now, we have an automated deployment pipelines within Amazon, and that's sort of the way services are deployed. So um, all we had to do was, you know, we just kind of enable the deployment pipelines to use a different version of JDK. So like Monday morning, Monday evening, you go back to sleep, you go to sleep, Tuesday morning you get up, and you're already running on Amazon Coreto. The switch was seamless. Um, so the automated deployment pipelines is basically what enabled it. Um, we also had a, and uh, one of the interesting stories is, you know, sometimes the service teams would come to us. They will find out about this change release cycle and got to pay cost starting JDK 11, and they'll start freaking out that, oh, no, no, I don't want to pay money to anybody else just for using a runtime. We believe runtimes, the language runtime should be free fundamentally free. So, you know, and that's when our service teams will start freaking out and come to us that, what do we do, what, what are we doing, you know, for this problem? Our customers would tell us. Our customers would tell us that <clears throat> with this updated change of release cycle and license policy, we're gonna dump Java and we're gonna go to a different stack. We're gonna go cloud native. We're gonna go, go build on Go, because if you write in Go, it's cloud native, it's supposed to be cloud native. Um, or we're gonna build in Node. So they were ready to dump Java language. And that's what you know, struck us that, hey, you know what? They're facing the same problem that we are facing as well. So our customer obsession kind of leadership principle right away kicked in that, let's do this. Let's, let's kind of release it, this binary that we are using internally within Amazon to the outside world as well. So really, we got a cross-company profile visibility. We could start looking at it, how the JDK is being used, and how, what's the heap usage, what methods are taking longer time, and that allowed us to make some performance improvements. So not just you know, bug fixes, simple bug fixes, and I'll give you an example of what the backport, what the, one of the bug fixes that we did, um, or actually a performance improvement we did. Very minor performance improvement, but a performance improvement nevertheless, okay? So this is a Flame Graph, and Flame Graph is an open source project that you can look at it, created by Brendan Gregg, and essentially it shows, you know, if you make a call to S3 using the publicly available Java SDK, for AWS. And as you dig down in there, you, know, you can see, for example, it says, oh, by the way, in this case, I'm using Java math big integer square to len, and it's taking about 20% of the time frame. Okay? Now, this is just a sample snapshot, but of course, we get this kind of snapshots for all of our services. So essentially, what we are generating is a heat map of how the calls are being invoked. Okay? So let me show you of a simple example that we did. And, and to set the context here is, what is the thing that you use in Java the most? Logging. You know, I mean, every time you are doing something, you call log. You, know, you log something. And when you call the log, the thing that you call is get class name. So things like those, you know, and we realized that those methods were you consistently across the services were taking a lot longer. So let's take a look at what we did to kind of get it up and running. So what I have here is a simple demo here. Okay, I'm gonna in this demo essentially what I have is an Oracle alias and a Coreto alias. Okay, so if you look at this here, uh, I'm using Oracle alias for Oracle JDK and Coreto alias for the Coreto JDK. Okay, so let me what let me do this way. Let me set up the aliases in this environment variable. Okay, so I'm gonna just drop it in here. So I got my Oracle and the Coreto alias is set. So if I say Oracle dash Oracle version, 
So we know uh, dash version. So it says this is the Oracle JDK. And similarly, if I do Coretto dash version, so that is my Coretto JDK because it says here, you know, this is a Java hotspot TM, 64-bit server VM, and this is a Coretto VM here, okay? It's a slightly older version, it's 202, the latest one is 212, but you'll, you'll get at least the essence of it. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to run sort of my simple performance ben benchmark, which is just going to call get simple name and get canonical name, okay? So let's do this way, oracle dash jar, and I'm going to run it this way. So what it's going to do is it's going to call that method multiple times and in multiple iterations, and it's going to report the time it's going to take it over there. Now, let's open up a new tab here, and if we go back up here for a second, let's set up a Coretto alias there as well, okay? So that we can compare the numbers afterwards. So let's set up the Coretto alias here. So if we go down here, you can see it takes about, about 773 seconds, okay? And this was the command that we executed. So let's copy the same jar file, and this time run using Coretto. So I'm going to say Coretto dash jar and run that jar file. So if you look here, it's about 800 milliseconds, or nanoseconds actually. And here, it's about two nanoseconds. So what we're seeing is about a 400 times performance improvement. Now, you may say it's nanoseconds, how does it matter? At Amazon scale, it matters. You know, because everything bubbles up so much. Think about the amount of CPU, amount of dollar that we can save just at an Amazon scale. I mean, S3 has trillions of operations every day with millions of concurrent requests every second. At that scale, this thing matters. So that's one example that we did. And this, again, we have um, contributed to the upstream. And let me show you another example here. So if I go back to my readme here, the next one that I'm going to run is uh, get thread info. Okay? So let's get a feel for that one too. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Coretto dash jar here. And this is where I'm running the Oracle version of it. So let's run it with the Oracle JDK first. And I just call it a bunch of time warm up, very crude, you know, uh, simple benchmark test here. But it takes about 4,500 um, microseconds in this case. Now let's run the same thing over here with the Corredo jar as well. And that takes about 1,300 microseconds, so about three times the performance improvement over here. Not as significant as the 400 times here, but again, any performance improvement particularly done at an Amazon scale makes a big difference to us. So these are the kind of changes, very tiny changes that we have done, but then we have contributed them upstream so that they are available to the rest of the community as well. So then the question came along that, OK, why external binary of Coretto? First thing first, we have been shipping an open JDK binary uh, on Amazon Linux for the longest time, you know, because our customers want a JDK bundle pre-baked in there. So we have been doing that for a very long time. And then there were end of public updates for Oracle JDK 8. When we were talking to our customers, we realized a lot of them are still on Oracle JDK 8. How many of you are using Oracle JDK 8 in production? There you go, pretty much 90% of the room. So our customers were, okay, same set of people. How many of you are planning to move to JDK 11? About five, ab about half the room. So, and that's exactly sort of the thing that we have seen with our customers as well. A lot of our customers, heavily amount of customers are on JDK 8. We are heavily running on JDK 8 as well, but only like some of them are thinking about jumping to JDK 11. So then the end of public updates means, how do I get patches? How do we get security fixes? Or do I have to pay money to something? I mean, there are a lot of other options, don't get me wrong. There is, of course, Adopt Open JDK, where they produce regular bills, but the TCK certification is lacking over there. You can get it from other vendors, and it comes in different flavors, you know, different restrictions. But that's sort of one of the driving factors. And then second is, for Oracle JDK 11, it was a different release cadence. It was never meant to have public updates beyond six months. So, you know, JDK 11, 11.01, 11.02, and boom, that's it. After that, they switch on to the next major build, which is 12. So the idea is to jump onto the new major build, but 
11 is the long-term supported release. How do I run it long enough where I don't have to pay the money? You know, because that's sort of the model that I've been used to for like the last 23 years. You get a JDK and you run it in the long-term release, and then it gives me like about a year to plan for the migration, but now you're just chopping my limbs right at the six months itself and saying either pay me money or get to the next level. So if you look at those JDKs from different vendors, you know, they are um, not bug by bug compatible. You know, I'm getting a different version on Linux, different versions on Windows, different versions on Mac. They all have different set of restrictions. In our case, we run a whole wide variety of platforms inside Amazon. So for us, the critical part was our customers were asking, give me a single version of OpenJDK distribution that is bug by bug compatible. What that means is that if a bug is fixed in a certain release in a particular operating system, it is fixed in the other operating system as well. So that's sort of how the whole aspect was that, okay, hey, we're doing open uh, Amazon Coretto inside Amazon, just the point of releasing it externally as well. And then last but not the least, you know, when the customer obsession again kicks in all, all the time, that is truly the kind of a beacon for us and the way we look at it, you know, our customers tell us, no, 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 we're going to go to a different stack. So, no, no, we are heavily vested on Java. Java is very much here to say, for last so many years, it has stayed as a top language, you know, by different standards. If not one, then number two, as Bird was talking about earlier today. So, we are vested into Java. We would like you to stay vested into Java and continue investing into it further. So, let's take a look at a little bit more details. You know, what are the platforms that are supported? So essentially, as I said, you know, a wide range of Linux platforms. So the basic requirement, of course, is you know, uh, glibc, but that pretty much covers all sorts of Linux platforms. Hopefully, this is an expansive list, and we are listening. You know, if any particular platform is missing, do let us know. Because essentially what we are doing is we are providing a packaging on top of OpenJDK. That's, that's sort of what the Coretto bits are, essentially. Uh, Windows, we have 32-bit for JDK 8, not for JDK 11, but you know, there are 64 bits for a wide range of platforms. There is, of course, Mac. You know, a lot of developers at Amazon use Mac, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. So there is a full developer build, and there are official Docker images for 8 and 11. So you can actually file bugs on them. You know, I mean, earlier, for example, there were kind of a lot of articles, if you have read, for example, can I bundle Oracle JDK 8, publish a JD or Docker image for that? That was not considered to be illegal, and I'm not a lawyer, by the way, so I don't want to get into that chartered, uncharted territory, but customers were asking questions, so talk to your legal department for that kind of thing. But in this case, this is a Docker image provided by Amazon, so you can actually use it the way you want to use it. So there is a, by default, Docker image available on Docker Hub. Um, so you can just go to uh, uh, hub.docker.com. So let's take a look at that here. So I go to hub.docker.com, and I go to Amazon Corretto. And I have the image right there itself. And also you can see, well, the, the snapshot is a bit old, actually. It shows about half a million downloads. This is about a million downloads now. Um, and these are the usual tags that we can think about. So we have 8 and 11, um, and anytime there is a release that is available on the update side of it, and I'll talk about how the update releases are handled, but then we push out a Docker image right away. One of the things that I've been pushing the team is to also have a JRE image, because right now we only have a JDK-based image, because JRE image is what is relevant. It's a much smaller, shorter image that is relevant from the microservices perspective. Um, nothing fancy here. Um, I can actually show you, for example, I can say docker container run Amazon Corretto Java dash version. And it's not able to find the image locally, so it'll download it. And because I didn't type the name correctly, so now it's going to just run it and say 202. So that's sort of the way, the, where the image is defaulting to. Uh, the, that's the latest tag, but you know, I could actually point it to a specific image, then it'll download the latest image. So very usual you know, kind of a Docker workflow that you are used to, essentially. Um, a quick idea on sort of the timeline where we were. So November 2018 was DevOps Belgium. That's, where, that's, that's sort of where we launched it. Um, we had multiple platforms at that point of time. Q1 2019, earlier this year is when we launched um, Coretto 8, that was a GA, and then uh, later, that, later that quarter we did Coretto 11 GA as well, 
and we have again a wide range of platforms. Um, H1 2019 is when we did sort of, you know, sort of having the patch releases, and now actually we are looking at eight and 11 constant patch releases. So in terms of what we have done so far, all of these are done. So what you are looking for is at least until 2023, a regularly update release every quarter and possibly more if there are security, CVEs, or patches that needs to be done. One of the most common questions, so by the way, I was talking about how we did the migration internally. We have thousands of microservices in Amazon that are using Java. So the switch from Oracle JDK to Amazon Coretto was seamless. We just had one problem in one of those microservices, and that, that was mostly a class path problem, the way the library was referenced. You know, we have all, all gone through class path hell, so sometimes you know, it strikes you back. Um, but across those thousands of services, the way the migration really worked was very seamless. We just changed the deployment pipeline from Oracle JDK to Amazon Coretto, and boom. You know, initially, we started with some services, you know, where we were handcrafting it, handholding it, because we were kind of skeptical how this is going to work out. But once it started working out, then we started doing mass migrations. You know, we would do like 500 services in a, in like a, in a week. Boom, you know, because this is all automated deployment. And to our pleasant surprise, because of the quality of code in OpenJDK, it worked rather seamless. So that's sort of the way we are. Now, most common question that customers ask us is, will the thing work? You know, so the, way, the general way to think about this is, if this works in OpenJDK, it'll work here, period. You know, I mean, there is no doubt about it, because all we are providing is a wrapper and a long-term support on top of that. Uh, any code changes, et cetera, that are done are in the update release or up in the upstream. So if it works over there, and um, it, it's meant to be a drop-in replacement for hotspot-based JVM. So for example, if you've been using Oracle JDK, it should just work over here as well. So um, one of the common questions people ask is, oh, by the way, do applets or Java Web Start work? How many of you are using, still using applets? It's okay, you can raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the part to understand that is both of these technologies were deprecated as part of Java 9, okay? So um, there's no plan to support them any, going any forward. So um, there are, there's a GitHub issue file on the Coretto uh, GitHub repo, and you can look at it exactly how customers have made it to work. So for example, Red Hat has an impl implementation of applets. They extract the jar, dump it in there if you're really desperate to get it working in your environment. But details are there on the GitHub issue over there. Does JavaFX work? Now, if you think about it, JavaFX is open source uh, which is as part of OpenJFX, but it's not integrated into OpenJDK by default. Uh, Oracle uh, somehow bundles it as part of open, uh, Oracle JDK. So one of the things that our customers are asking is, you know, we still we love JavaFX, we want this to work out of the box. So we included OpenJFX implementation as part of Amazon Coretto. However, there are certain codecs and providers that are, need to be licensed separately. So those are not included yet. So let me show you a quick example of how this thing looks like. So what I have is, uh, let's see if this works first of all. There you go, all right, cool. Um, what I have is a Windows desktop running in EC2, and that's where I'm connecting to. So this is basically NetBeans here. So I can go to, say, Tools, Java Platforms, and this is where I've got, this is the default one, but I've configured JDK uh, Coretto 8 here as well. So it's fairly straightforward to configure Coretto 8 here. And then what I have is, you guys remember that ping pong ball for the applet that used to bounce across your browser? It's sort of a similar example here. But this is a standard JavaFX sample as part of the JDK tutorial. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to run it here, right click and say run this file. So this is running on uh, Coretto 8, but this is sort of a simple JavaFX example. And again, the whole idea is if it matters to you, it matters to us. So we have in integrated this as part of Coretto out of the box. So this would just work for you. Now, something else I wanted to show you also is um, how easy it is to get started with Coretto, okay? So what I've done over here is, 
and you can refer to this GitHub, simple GitHub repo, but essentially I have a AL2 instance running or Amazon Linux 2 instance running over here. So let's clear this up here. And I'm gonna log into that Amazon Linux 2 instance. So all I've done is I've logged into that instance once and that's why it's not prompting that the host is unknown. But then essentially the process is pretty simple, okay? What I'm gonna do is, first I'm gonna run the update command here which is a usual update command. Then I'm gonna say java-version, so that does not exist for now. So um, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install or enable Coreto 8 from the extras repo. There is an extras repo in Amazon Linux 2, so it enabled that. Now I could install Amazon Coreto, that gives me only JRE, but I'm gonna say I want to do the development with it. So I'm gonna install the development version of it. So it's gonna install the package for me and what it's doing is it's downloading JDK 8 or Coreto 8 for me. And once Coreto 8 is downloaded, it's ready to go basically. So the point I wanna say here is how we are tapping into the existing mechanisms on customers are used to to get started with JDK essentially, okay? So this is where it's really downloading Amazon Coreto 182. And now if I say Java dash version, I got my Java up and running here, okay? So uh, now this is, I know this is 202, so I filed a bug this morning that why my extra repos are not 212, because that's out of the latest release. So that's the release cadence that we are working on. So this is one. Um, now I can show you something similar for Ubuntu as well. Ubuntu, the experience is a bit different, but that's an effort that we, I know we need to work on. So this is my Ubuntu machine here. Now, if I do, for example, to begin with, say, Java version, it says, yeah, install the default JRE or OpenJDK versions of it, but those are not you know, long-term supported. OpenJDK is cool. Um, so all I'm gonna do is just gonna install the Java common package that needs to be installed. So I install the Java common package. While it's doing that in the background, I'm gonna curl download the latest version of Coreto 11 in this case, okay? So I'm gonna curl download it. So it downloads the 1103 package for me then I am just going to install this package after do downloading it locally. I'm going to install it. And once the package is installed, then my Java Dash version is Coreto 11.03. So the idea is tapping into the existing mechanism that you are used to for running and getting started with JDK is what we want to provide an experience over there. So how do we support? Um, as I said, uh, this is uh, absolutely no cost um, security, uh, uh, long-term support over here. You don't have to pay any money to anybody at all in this point of time because languages and implement runtime should be free so that you can innovate on top of that. Um, so it's a no cost security patches at least quarterly. Um, and um, of course, there's a GitHub repo. And our recommendation is if it's an issue with the Java implementation, then you need to go to file an issue in the OpenJDK repo. But if it's an issue with the packaging or Docker image or things like that, which are in Coreto control, those are Coreto. So if, even if you try to file an issue over there, we will still guide you back to over there. So we wanna make sure the relationship is very clear in that sense. Because we don't wanna do, we don't wanna patch anything in Coreto that causes it to fork or you know, deviate from the stream, mainstream. Now, as a AWS premium support customer, so like let's say you're using AWS, and you have a premium support, you can certainly file tickets and that'll give you access to me and you know, the rest of the engineering team who can actually work with you more closely on that. But that's sort of the mechanism. But otherwise, if you just wanna use JDK, by all means, Amazon Coreto, use it on on-prem, on your desktop, on your preferred cloud, wherever you wanna use it, you can absolutely use it. And then you have the access to the usual support channels. So how do we collaborate? Um, Earlier this year, um, Red Hat became the lead for the update releases, that as has been the case for the previous releases. So Red Hat is now the leader for JDK 8 update and JDK 11 update. Now we work very closely with Red Hat in contributing patches and bug fixes to the releases. So for example, customers come, oh this feature is there in JDK 9 or 10 and we want this to be backported to JDK 8. So we will work with Red Hat on contributing that patch over there and then we will make a release over there. So that's an important part to understand. And that's how we work at it. And so what I'm showing over here is, and this is a bit dated, so you can see this tweet, these tweets are from February 22nd 
and I'm working with the uh, Corredo team internally to push out a release, push out a blog post on what, what things that we have done. But essentially, these are some of the issues that we have contributed, backports, patches, fixes, to the upstream JDK releases. That's an important part to understand. Another example which I, which I can highlight over here is, so because we are running it at scale, um, and so what, what you're seeing over here is, you're running JDK 8, you wanna see how your heap is growing, okay? And we have this observability built into Coretto 8, okay? And the idea over here is, um, you can see there are multiple thresholds over there. So what we do is we monitor those services inside Amazon as they are running it. And if their heap reaches a certain threshold, we give them an alarm. Like the green one is like, okay, it's a warning. So we'll give you like an alert during the daytime. But if you reach the orange level is when we will give you an alarm during the nighttime as well that, you know what? We don't know, something is going wrong, service is gonna crash or burn take a look at it or recover from it. And of course, you have your usual logs and performance graphs and flame graphs that you can look at it to figure out what's going wrong. But the, that's the beauty of you know, being the producer and the consumer as well. So in terms of how we did it, we basically implemented the metrics and alarms around uh, the way G1 garbage collector was not reporting the metrics correctly. So we basically made that patch in G1 garbage collector. And then we implemented a fix on top of Coretto first. And we implemented the fix on top of Corretto, and then we, because we are running at such a huge scale, we had the ability to test it internally first. That makes sure that these metrics and alarms and the way they are reported, they are correct, and then we are able to do the correct action. And once we did that, then we opened the contribution to OpenJDK, fixed it in 11.01, and then released it in 8 update 2.12. So the point being, Anything that we are doing is, you know, we are able to learn from our internal experience because, you know, a service team is as much a customer as you guys are, and you know, if you're not at Amazon. So we look at customers, internal and external customers, about the same in that sense. So, but the only thing is with internal customers, we have the ability to observe a lot more deeply and be able to react upon that. So this sort of just want to give you a timeline on how this thing evolved and how we fixed it and how we contributed back to the community. What else do we contribute to OpenJDK? So um, this is a page that highlights, you know, if you go specifically the list of patches that we have contributed. So I don't want to dig into each and every patch, but on our website we provide a comprehensive list of patches that we have contributed both to JDK 8 and JDK 11. One of, part, one of the parts that I want to highlight is, if you want to look at who is contributing to the update releases. So Alexei Shipilev, you know, he's one of the guys at Red Hat, is one of the lead engineers in the update releases, he releases what patches have gone into OpenJDK, update releases particularly. So as you can see, we have been very actively contributing to the update releases. So if JDK 8 and 11 matters to you, particularly the update releases, take a look, take a pick, you know, where do you want to get your uh, update releases from? Who is contributing to it? And, and I'm very excited by the orange part of it particularly, and this trend of operating in the open is only going to grow. You know, we are, by the way, um, I am based out of Bay Area. We are actively hiring. If any of you are willing to move to the Bay Area, uh, we are looking for somebody to run the engineering team, grow the engineering team, and build the engineering team in the base out of Bay Area, either Bay Area or Seattle. So we are very actively uh, looking for building that team. One of the common questions that we are asked is, what is sort of the relationship with Adopt to OpenJDK? So Adopt to OpenJDK is a fantastic project. You know, it um, checks out the OpenJDK repo, runs it on a build farm, produces a binary that customers are very happy they're able to use it. But it does not come with the long-term support. Um, and in certain cases, it does not even have the TCK val validation. Um, so our, we have been working with the Adopt to OpenJDK um, team quite regularly, so the plan is to have sort of Coretto binaries to be hosted there. Um, so possibly you can get Coretto nightly binary from Adopt Open JDK project. And earlier in the time, you know, when we were building our own test and build infrastructure, we actually had a very good exchange with Martin Warburg and the rest of the gang from Adopt Open JDK to learn that idea and then we implemented you know, on how they build the build form and the test, how they did the testing and we implemented for Coretto. So this is a quote from Martin where he's saying, um, Having Amazon announced 
Coretto is a great recognition that OpenJDK is a viable runtime for production. So stick with OpenJDK, you know, don't go away from Java platform. That's sort of my primary request. So um, as I said earlier, um, how do we look at it? Should we contribute to OpenJDK or Coretto? Let's say if you want to partner with us. So our goal is to have 100% of the work for the language runtime be contributed upstream. Now we may experiment with that in our Coretto builds, just to make sure that the feature is vetted and it makes sense, but then eventually it will be contributed back to OpenJDK. Um, now, um, so the patches involving OpenJDK should really be going up to the upstream, but if there are any packaging improvements that, oh, this packager doesn't want to work for me, or there's a typo in the packager, or the Docker image doesn't look good for me, that is a bug that you can file on our GitHub repo, essentially. So what are the key goals for the Corero team? We want to make sure that the OpenJDK community keeps thriving. That is the basic fundamental goal. You know, because it, our, our, a lot of our services, every time you hit a major AWS service, you're, you are hitting an Amazon Corero backend somewhere. So you know, a lot of the AWS services rely upon Corero. So, and that is a downstream distribution of OpenJDK. So we want to make sure OpenJDK keeps thriving. To us, our internal customers, and to our external customers, we want to make sure we are able to provide a no-cost security patches. And the way security works, I didn't get into that, is there is a CVE group at the OpenJDK, and one of the Coretto engineers is part of that. So anytime there is a CVE in OpenJDK, the vendors are told that, okay, there is a CVE, then we work collaboratively to make sure we patch the release, and then we release, make a release together, you know, typically on the same day. Um, so typically I'm saying, but sometimes the releases could be misaligned, but generally not within a few hours, maybe a day or two apart, but then you will all get the patches like, about the same time. Because of the scale that we are using within Amazon, you know, we are able to quickly validate and release fixes and we want to make sure that we don't have to wait for a few months to get a bug fix because of a support contract. You know, hey, there's a bug, test it, implement, implement it, test it, fix it, and release it. And we want to definitely grow our contributions to the OpenJDK project. As I said earlier, I'm happy with the trend of the orange box. I only want to grow it bigger. And I, we only want to make it bigger and bigger. Okay, uh, what can I do? So first thing first, uh, download and use Coretto. You know, what our customers do is typically they pick a project, they you know, you replace their existing JDK, just literally change the Java home to the new Amazon Coretto and they start playing with that. How does that make? Or if you have a deployment pipeline, just replace JDK in there. And that's the e easiest way to get started with it. Um, integrate and you know, integrate with your existing project, test it, see what works, what doesn't work. This is an open source project here, you know, at least the packager and the installers and the and Docker image. We would love to hear from you what is broken. You know, if you are successful, if you don't want to talk to us, I'm good. But if you are failing, I definitely want to hear from you that what is working. That is far more important to me. Um, contribute, and as I said earlier, um, and if you want to join the team, hey, we are hiring like crazy on, in Seattle and Bay Area. As I said earlier, we are hiring an engineering manager in Bay Area. I'm based out of Palo Alto, and I would love to work with you in building that ecosystem and having a top-notch uh, Java engineering team based out of our, our Palo Alto offices. Um, these are sort of our main URLs that you need to remember. Anything and everything about Coretto is on AWS, Amazon Coretto. That's sort of your one landing page, essentially. Um, the GitHub repos are on github.com slash Coretto again. Uh, there are separate repos for Coretto 8 and 11. You can file issues, you can track issues, you can ask questions. All of that is there. The team is on top of it, you know, and answering questions, not going beyond 24 hours to respond. And this is where you can ask your Stack Overflow questions, essentially, if you were to. And again, that's something that the team very actively strives to respond back. So I think we have about five minutes. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. I think they're running with the mic over there. Hello. Um, one of the things that I've been paying attention to lately is the image sizes. Um, is there any roadmap for rolling out just a, a runtime for Coretto? Yes, uh, there is an uh, issue actually already filed. So Debian-based image, Alpine-based images, JRE-only images, that is absolutely one of the things in the, in the plan.
Great. Uh, what quarter? Oh, we don't know. That's, we don't know the roadmap yet. So I would say take a look at the issue exactly. And uh, the way we collect feedback is the issue is file. If it matters to you, plus one it. And essentially every, mon every Monday afternoon is when we meet to look at sort of you know, the priority and adjust alignments and things like that. That would be your place to say that, you know what, this matters to me. Okay, so that bumps up the priority of the issue. Well, if no more questions, I'm going to be, oh, there was one more question out here. Spring. Have you tried Coreto with the Spring uh, ecosystem? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I run, um, my laptop has only, uh, I mean, not only, it has both Oracle JDK and Coreto, but all my samples are, like, using Coreto and Spring Boot. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, th there is, um, we have lots and lots of customers who are using Spring Boot applications. Uh, can't name the names, but, you know, we, have, we, we do a lot of internal testing in terms of that it works with sort of the major frameworks. We want to have that seamless out-of-the-box experience for you guys, absolutely. If it doesn't work, that's definitely a bug. You know, if a particular use case doesn't work for you, that's definitely a bug. All right, cool, I'm gonna be hanging out. Yeah. Oh, one more question, oh, you have a question? Yeah. All right. So when you say that there's also under the radar supporting uh, distributions like Alpine and so small distributions, these don't come by default with glibc. They come with muscle libc and others. There are some projects around starting in, in Java 12 and so to support uh, the JVM with other libc implementations. Is there any plan to track that? Or when you say that Alpine is under the radar, is based on uh, the ports of glibc to, to Alpine and so? Correct, yeah, so I, I would say take a look at the issue, that issue provides more details, but at this point, because JDK 8 and 11 are the only long-term supported releases, so those are the only two releases that we have implemented. So for now, the team's focus is to continue supporting them. You know, we don't plan to, at least that's the current plan, we don't plan to have 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 as part of the releases, mm -hmm. but we will definitely, we're definitely tracking those projects. So the next LTS is supposed to be 17, so that's sort of what we are walking towards. I, know, I mean, unless customers really care about that, hey, we really care about 12 or 13. And then when we talk to customers, we realize it's not the release that they care about. It's a one, for one particular feature that they care about. And then we can look at maybe backporting that. That's sort of where we are working with Red Hat on contributing to upstream. Thank you. All right, cool. Thank you so much. <laughs>